Hey y'all, I'm Elise Nicole. Welcome to my channel where I talk about everything military related and more. Today I'm talking about my second MEPS experience and I'm going to start right from the beginning um, just in case you didn't see my first one. I'm going to start from the hotel even though it's pretty much the same process as my first experience but I will go through the whole thing just for you. If you haven't watched my first one, I will link that right up here somewhere. And without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, I don't have notes today. I'm just going right off the top of my head and I'm just gonna tell y'all um, everything I can remember. When you go to MEPS, the military entrance station, <laughs> uh, you're gonna stay at a hotel the night before. Check-in time, I don't know if this is for everybody, but check-in time for me was three, or for us was 3 p.m. to seven or six. I think it was like three to six or three to seven, one of them. So you check into the hotel, but you don't check in at the front desk. You check in outside this military briefing room, like further back in the back of the hotel. So you're gonna take your ID, your, well right now COVID paperwork to make sure that you don't have COVID. And it's just gonna be paperwork saying that you quarantine for, um, uh, the previous two weeks before you went to that so you're gonna take that and then they're gonna take your temperature so once you check in you go into the briefing room and you're gonna be briefed with a group of people somebody that briefs you that's a part of the military and then they're just gonna brief you over how to conduct yourself at the hotel telling you that you represent um the United States military, you don't do nothing crazy. You have a curfew of 10 o'clock where you have to be in your room by 10 o'clock. You don't have to be asleep, but you have to be in your room. I think sometimes they do room checks, but the times that I went, they didn't do any room checks, but be in your room at 10 o'clock. <laughs> They're gonna give you a meal voucher if you wanna eat dinner there. So you fill out what you want to eat. They're gonna have options and you pick a time that you're gonna come back down to pick your food up for uh, dinner. What else? Um, oh, and you're gonna have a MEPS briefing later on that evening. So after that, you sign in, you put your information on there, like your name, your phone, no, that's your phone number. You put your name, your recruiter's information on there and your recruiter's phone number. And then uh, they ask you what branch you're joining because when you go to MEPS, it's not just the branch that you're joining, it's all the branches there. So they ask what branch you're joining and then I guess that's how they like organize the list of whoever's supposed to be there. And then they give you your room key and say, be down for whatever time your briefing is and then you can just go and do whatever so in the briefing room it's like a little military briefing room but it's also like game systems and pool table and other stuff in there that you can do while you're there and i didn't do none of that because COVID. <laughs> it's COVID and I'm really an introvert really so I talk to people but not like that. I like that. <laughs> not like that. Uh, I went upstairs to my room I was just chilling on my phone or whatever until it was time for me to go down to get my dinner. I got my dinner around six I think. I went to get my dinner and then I went back upstairs to eat my dinner. So after that, the briefing was pretty late, I remember. I think it was like at eight or nine. I think it was like eight, eight thirty. You gonna say eight thirty, it was around that time. And they just brief you over what you're gonna be doing 
at MEPS, how to conduct yourself in MEPS. They're gonna show you like two little quick videos. They're gonna take roll because they say if you don't come down, then you're not gonna be able to go to MEPS. So they make sure everybody shows up and then they ask if you have any questions. Nobody ever has questions. <laughs> so then you're just dismissed and you either go back to your room or do whatever until 10 o'clock. So when 10 o'clock comes, you're in your room. Now you have to be downstairs at four o'clock in the morning. You get a wake up call at 3.30. When you go down, you go back down to the room that you checked in at. You show them your ID and then you give them your uh, key card to your room. When you turn that in, you get your breakfast meal voucher. So you go and eat breakfast until about 4 30. then they call everybody to line up you line up by shippers on the left and um the people that's just going to melt the process to do whatever they need to do on the right that's just how they lined us up and after that they take roll to make sure everybody is down um you will get left if you sleep in so make sure you get up on time and you're down there on time because i know i think it was the second time that i went that somebody uh didn't wake up and we had to leave them so once they take roll they dismiss the people that drove themselves there if you drive yourself to the hotel you have to drive yourself to maps so if you don't want to drive maps then you should have somebody drop you off at the hotel so they dismissed the drivers. This time I did not drive myself. I got dropped off because I didn't want to drive the MEPS. <laughs> Cause I really don't like driving at nighttime. And I know the first time that I went, I had that whole little experience that I didn't want to happen again. <laughs> so I just had somebody drop me off and you can go back and listen to what happened. <laughs> in my first MIPS experience video, but they dismissed the drivers. And then once they dismissed the drivers, everybody that was lined up went to board the bus. And we drove to MIPS, it's about, from the hotel that we were staying in, it was about 15 minutes from where we were. So it wasn't far, it was downtown Houston. Once we got to the MIPS building, we got off the bus and then they had us line up outside the MIPS building. Outside the MIPS building, we lined up by a female, male, and the shippers. And we waited for about 10, 15 minutes until the security guard came out and briefed us over how to conduct ourselves in the MIPS building. It's a government building, so you can't have any weapons. Um, he says, double check your bags to make sure you don't have any weapons. Like, obviously no guns, no pocket knives, no pepper spray, no sharp objects like scissors or anything like that. So if you didn't drive yourself there uh, and you had something like that and you couldn't put it in your car, then you had to throw it away. Uh, kind of briefed us over like what to expect throughout the whole day and he was saying make sure you address everybody as yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am he finished briefing us um i guess basically all the lines merged together but the shippers went first and then females and then males so it was one big line so when we go in we had to have our id cards and our COVID papers out. They checked our temperatures one by one, and then they had us sign in and write down our temperature. After that, you go through security. Security there, it reminds me of the airport security. Like you put your things through the uh, conveyor belt, and then you go through the, the little scanner thing or whatever. And once you're clear, then you get your stuff and then you go upstairs. So the MEPS building that I went to, we went to the third floor and that's where all the branches liaisons are. So I went to the Air Force liaison. You check in with your liaison. And then I got my name tag. So I got my name tag and then he sent me to the front control desk. And that's where like you, you check in with them too. And then you get fingerprinted, you get your picture taken and they send you to wherever you're uh, supposed to be. So that day I was doing medical processing squaring. My file and sent me down to medical. And the first thing that they do is brief you. 
So everybody that is there that day for medical is gonna get briefed at the same time. So we went into the briefing room and we waited for a little minute. They gave us some papers to fill out. It's basically like the, it's similar to, it's like you're refilling out the same papers over and over. So um, they gave you a paper, like if you had tattoos, then mark your tattoos, even though that's in your paperwork. But they give you that again, and then some other papers. So while we're waiting, we're filling out our paperwork. And then we finally start to get briefed and they brief you over everything that you're gonna do for the day in detail. Then they say, if you lie or any of your paperwork, then you will get caught and then you won't be able to swear in. Um, and pretty much we were getting briefed for like probably an hour cause she was going through a PowerPoint and it was just so long. So after the briefing, then we go to actually like get examined and everything so we go to like the front desk in the medical center the medical part of the building we give our file to the front desk before we sit down and so when we're sitting down it's like we're waiting to get our blood pressure and temperature taken it's like we sit down in a line so you take your blood pressure and temperature and then after that you get your hearing checked now with the hearing you go into like a, I don't know how to describe it. Like if you ever had like a temporary building in middle school or high school, like the T buildings in middle and high school, it was like a mini one of them, but it was like made of metal and it was soundproof. It had like a little window on the door. Go in there and they close the door so you can't hear anything on the outside. And then you put on the headphones. So you take your hearing test and then uh, they sent all the females to the female doctor and all the males to the male doctors after the hearing. And the first thing we did was take a urine sample when we see the doctor. We went right there and they gave us a cup. And you had to fill the cup up a good bit, like a little bit over half. So make sure um, you have to be, <laughs> and we can't close the door. So um, the doctor is watching us, but the nurse is watching us. So she's literally standing right there while you pee in the cup. So you pee in the cup, and then there's like a little window on the other side of the restroom. And then she tells you to take the cup and set it right there inside that window. And then it's gonna be somebody inside the window. They're gonna test your pee right there and you just wait on the test it's really quick and then after that she tells you to take the cup and put it um somewhere on this other counter so we can get a pregnancy test so after the pregnancy test we go into this like little waiting area where it's outside the doctor's office <sighs> so when everybody is done getting a urine and pregnancy test for the female. We go and talk to the doctor. He opened the door, he, he just opened the door and sat back down and kept doing what he was doing. And we all looked in there and was like, we got a, we got a male doctor. And then the nurse was like, yeah. And then, and then we was like, so he gonna check us down here? And then she was like, yeah. And we just looked at each other like, oh my God. So, we went into the doctor one by one and he's basically just going through all of your medical uh, paperwork that you filled out and just asking you questions, making sure you ain't lying about anything or whatever. And then he sends you uh, back out and then you go into the examining room. And so once you go into the examining room, our female nurse was in there and she checked our height and wait to make sure we were within range, like on the BMI scale, make sure we weren't under and make sure we weren't over our max. And if you were over your max, then you get measured around your waist. So after that, she told um, us to get undressed and put on a hospital gown. So we're in our bra and panties and, and, and put a hospital gown over that. And when you go, make sure you wear underwear that covers 
everything because if you don't it's going to two ways they're not going to let you do it and then you're going to have to come back or they're going to give you some whitey tights but just in case make sure you wear some granny panties <laughs> or some boy shorts or something like that so we had to wait on everybody to get done with the doctor so we were in there literally just like goofing around, just tired and just messing with the nurse in there. <laughs> we were being honest. After over two hours, um, everybody was finally done and then the doctor came in. The doctor came in, which is a male. The nurse was in there, a female. They closed the door and put on like a video of the example of the exercises that we would be performing. So uh, they had us lined up in three rows of four. So it was 12 girls in there. We performed all the exercises. So we did like something with our wrist. We did this right here. We did the duck walk, of course. That's something everybody talks about. Um, what else we do? It was a lot of stuff. I'll make a separate video on and it's like displaying all the exercises. So I'll show y'all what y'all gonna be getting into. And y'all, bra and pants. <laughs> it's really making sure like you're properly doing everything to make sure that your body is functioning correctly and that you're not hiding anything. Like you like broke your leg and you can't, you know, do something that it would normally be able to do so they're just looking for that type of stuff and once we get through all the exercises then the doctor goes to his office and calls us in one by one i went in second and i was just like let me let me not think about this too much let me just get up in here and get this done because i really ain't got no option in there uh had my hospital gown on and they gave me like you know if you go to the gynecologist you know how this process works um i've never had a male gynecologist so that's that was my thing so i was just a little bit uncomfortable because there was another male just touching me down there get on the bed spread your legs with the the uh, paper over you and he like kind of feels around in there and you know goes in there to make sure everything is okay and then after that you lay on your back turn over and then he spreads your cheeks and you cough and then after that oh to my sisters to my sisters <laughs> don't wear a weave when you go because your scalp has to be exposed so he's gonna take well, he or she is going to, the doctor is going to take his fingers and like kind of massage your scalp to make sure that everything is good with your scalp or whatever. So your scalp has to be exposed. So wear your real hair, don't wear it. That was pretty much it. He signed off on the paper. The nurse signs off on the paper and then you get sent to, uh, did I skip the part? I did skip a part, y'all. Okay, earlier, I forgot at one point it was, but we did vision. Vision was um, a regular standard vision test. Um, and then they tell you to read this long paragraph, make sure you don't have any reading impairments. Um, and then you take the depth perception test. So the depth perception test, uh, I've never taken one besides then. So you look into this like little thing, you see a whole bunch of circles. So it was like three, three rows of circles with four, I think it was like three or four circles in each row. And it was like, they were grouped like this. So it was like one, two, three, four, five, six like that and then in each row you have to pick out which circle stands out the most so it's either you can see it or you don't okay that was a rewind let me get back to after the physical so after you're done with the physical you go get your blood drawn i'm not scared of needles so it really wasn't a big deal to me it is a big needle but it's it goes pretty fast so you go in there, sit down in the chair, 
if you've had your blood drawn before, then you know how this goes. They give you a little ball to squeeze. Check your veins, find your veins. Um, stick you, fill a little tube, wrap your arm in. Okay, after that, I think that was the last thing we did down in medical. So we went back to the front medical desk, turned in our paperwork so they can sign it, and then they gave it back to us. Then they sent us back up to the control desk on the third floor. Go to the control desk, tell them you're done with medical. They send you back to your liaison. You go into your liaison office this time. They, um, you actually talk to somebody about, um, I can't remember exactly what we talked about, but we talked about like legal stuff and I don't know, I can't remember. You talk to your liaison about something, he signs off on your paperwork and then he sends you back to the front control desk and tells you to tell them that you're ready for phase one. So phase one is right before you swear in. Okay, so I went back to the front control desk and I told them that and they sent me to legal. I went straight to this lady's office. She had me sign in with my fingerprint and she just asked me a few questions about my paperwork and then she asked about uh, my beneficiaries, like who do I want my money to go to like if i were to die or something happened after that um everything was good and then she took me outside the room so she can take like all my fingerprints i'm guessing for like a background check I goes through and i go back to my liaison so this time they um uh, they have you do like this little uh exercise where you lift the weight off the floor and above your head it's attached it's like a smith machine you might not know what that is but like the it's not a free weight it's attached to something to where it's secure so you lift it up like a deadlift and then you bring it up right here and push it above your head really it's just to measure how much weight you can lift so females max out at 100 and males max out at 110. y'all know i had to go ahead and max that out <laughs> Okay, so you do that and then your liaison verifies your contract, make sure you're signing up for the right thing, like a four year or six year contract. Okay, so after all that was verified, I fingerprinted to sign and then he told me I would be swearing in around, it was either the three or four o'clock. I go and wait um, in like the little waiting area by the front control desk until I was called to swear in. Call me to swear in. You go into like this little, this swear room with flags and plaques. And the commander comes in and breaks you over um, how the swearing is going to go. And he teaches you like how to stand at attention and parade rest or whatever, because that's what you're going to be doing uh, for the swearing. After that, we swear in. Basically, we just repeat after him. So I will insert a clip of my swearing right now. I do swear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the defend. That I will support the defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign domestic. Foreign domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officer appointed over me. And the orders of the officer appointed over me. According to regulation. According to regulation. And the uniform code. And the uniform code. A military justice. A military justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Uh, when we step next to That's how it goes. And then after we swear in, we go to like a room next to it where he goes over our contract and then we sign off on it and he signs off on it and then we're free to go so after that i was happy but i was ready to go home because i was so exhausted you probably you probably can see it through my mask on my uh swearing video i was so tired y'all i don't make no sense because you're literally there from five in the morning to whatever time you leave. So I left around four something. So that's 
a long time to just be up and moving around and doing all that stuff. Before I left, I did get lunch, but after I ate lunch, I left and I went home. So that is it for my second MAPS experience. I have one more to get through. That will be a whole nother video because these these MAPS experience videos be so long. So that's pretty much it. I hope y'all got some type of insight on MAPS. If you, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you wanna share anything from your MAPS experience, feel free to. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want and stay tuned for more videos. I got y'all.